Oh hello, welcome to another MLM dumpster fire. Today we're back to watch a Young Living training and this is part two. I think I did a video on that maybe three months ago at this point. I always planned on making part two. I think there's three or four parts altogether that they made. Excuse you, sir. Why are bikes so freaking loud? These two people are going to give a lot of marriage advice and how to make your young living biz not separate you and your spouse, I guess. They have no education or expertise in the field. And this is the young living hun that is quite high up in young living anyway. I've reacted to so many of her stuff before. She uses face manipulation, in my opinion, and religion to manipulate people. She believes that she was called by God in to this opportunity, of course. Nothing surprising there, right? So this is about half an hour long, a little bit longer than half an hour. So let's just get into it. Get your coffee, get your snacks, tea, whatever's your preference. Before we get into it, big shout out to all my channel members. Appreciate you guys as always and everyone else who's watching. And don't forget to click that like and subscribe button if you'd like to support my channel. Leave your commentary down below if I forget to comment on something. And let's just put a little disclaimer in here and let's get into this video. If I walk away during the video, I just went to get my laundry. I'm still listening though, because everything's over here in, the, in this one room. Let's start. How are we tonight? I'm just checking to make sure that we are here. Yes, we are. Okay, awesome. So it has been a hot minute since we've been able to be in here. Thank you guys for being patient with us. We hit humdinger of a sickness and it knocked us out for like three weeks it was rough you guys it was rough off. i'm still recovering i you know i'm not 100 percent, but we're like it's been time it's been a while it's time it's time so thank you guys for being so patient and gracious with us um tonight hey shana um tonight we're gonna be talking about scheduling the importance of scheduling with your boo so that you can take this business seriously, so you can have your roadmap to success, so you know what you're doing, so your boo knows what you're doing, and having that really clear communication. So, um, my stud muffin is gonna take it away. Let's go. You go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I get all the notes up here. Okay. Yeah, there's a story in uh, the Old Testament, Exodus 17 that uh, as we were preparing for this, I kept thinking like this, this is the story that I think parallels a lot of what men feel um, when they're trying to figure out how to support their wives. So anyway, you, you may know the story. Um, it's a really simple story, but the Israelites go to battle and uh, with Moses leading and he tells them that he's going to go up on the hill and hold his staff and that uh, they'll have victory as long as uh, he's holding the staff up. And anyway, I mean, I guess trigger warning, I should be better with my trigger warning, but if spiritual and religious manipulation really triggers you, you should probably not watch this because this there's going to be a lot of it in this video. As you can tell, they're starting off strong. Right. In this story, uh, uh, Aaron, his brother and a man named her, uh, come to follow. It's confusing. <laughs> uh, they, they, they go up there with, with, uh, with Moses. And um, sure enough, uh, Moses holds his hands up and the people have victory. And, um, you know, I feel like that reminds me a lot of what men go through is what, what Aaron would have felt, right? And so the, the wife is starting something, it's working, it's rolling. Um, and then the man's like, well, what do I do? You know, and I feel like that's what Aaron was going through on the hill. And uh, him and his buddy, her, um, end up figuring out to, because uh, Moses gets tired. And so his arms start to come down and uh, the people stop having victory and they're like, this is a problem. Um, and so they figure like, we're just going to hold his arms up, you know? And that was their job uh, to help Moses have victory or help the, the Israelites have victory. And, it, you know, it's, it's kind of an odd story, but like, it is very similar, I think, to what a lot of guys feel. They're like, okay, so, you know, we want to have victory. We want to, uh, uh, you know, move forward. We want to try different things with our families. You know, there's maybe new beliefs happening. Like, okay, there's something that's, you know, possible that we didn't see as possibly before. And then it's like, well, what do we do? You know, uh, do we, uh, you know, start an Instagram? You know, do you want me to start talking to moms? You know, what is the thing that... 
they, uh, they don't. <laughs> Tabby, <laughs> Abby doesn't let me talk to other women. Uh, so this is... I like him for me. <laughs> I don't need to share him with other moms. Even now, I'm in trouble for this. Um, but the, uh, you know, I think a lot of guys like want to know, like, how do I support um, this thing really well? Um, you know, and, and do they though? The most common reason that we hear people not joining MLMs is because their partner is against it. Like if they have shared financials, a lot of the spouses are not supportive because a lot of them are aware that this sounds like a product-based pyramid scheme. A lot of them know what MLMs are. A lot of them, even after a while, when they see that it's just not working for their partner, you've been at this for a while and it's not really working. So I think it's time to stop and, you know, and they're just coming from a place of love. They don't want to see you suffer. They don't want to see you working for nothing and putting all that effort into nothing, getting nothing in return. They don't want to see you scammed, basically. That's why they aren't supportive. So the fact that they're pretending as if all the husbands are automatically supportive, it's not what happens in most cases, I feel like. I don't know. I don't have the statistics on how many partners are pro MLM when the person first starts, but I feel like not many of them. And that's what, you know, that was Aaron's niche was holding up uh, Moses' arms. You know, that was his thing. That's what he figured out to do. Um, you know, so anyway. We're... Which is why I think it's so important for, you know, as the woman, you know, if you're running this business, there are some men that do this, but it's very rare. Most of them are women that are really taking this on and leading. And I think it's why it's so important for you to have that communication of like, this is what I need from you more than... Um, you know, your husband having a, you know, becoming a leg for you or whatever. It's still giving you more work unless you're going to actually have your husband going out and talking to house moms or whatever. House moms. <laughs> That's not a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's not just like giving you more work or go create an Instagram account or go start, you know, hosting parties <laughs> as a man. I don't think that's necessarily like what's going to support your wife the most. But I think it's important if you have a husband that's like, hey, what can I do? Do you want me to be a leg for you? Do you want me to host parties for you? Do you want me to have an Instagram account? I think recognize that like, hey, Jen, recognize that they they want to help and then give them a like a job to do that and be really specific. It's similar to like my son Ulysses when he was little, he was just like wild, had no idea like what he was doing, right? He was super intense. And then you give him a job, like clean this table <laughs> as a three-year-old. And he was like, focus. And not that your husband's a wild child. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a house mom. <laughs> or house mom. <laughs> but what I'm saying is men do really well with knowing their job. Like say, okay, this is what I need from you. When I go in to get some work done in my room, yes, I'm here, but I'm not here. Okay. So that means Means don't let all of our children come running in to find me or pound on the door saying mom a million times when I'm trying to get a video done or I'm trying to host a call or I'm trying to mentor someone and there's like mom 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 like you know I've seen it a million times where there's like the mom yelling like go talk to your dad <laughs> where's the dad tell him specifically when you go in hey I need you to be on top of children okay <laughs> get real specific he doesn't need to be a leg for you necessarily he doesn't need to be an Instagrammer he just needs to watch the children really well while you get work done does that make sense okay okay <clears throat> Okay, so we want to talk about, we've talked about a few things about supporting, uh, you know, what, what are the different things that husbands can do? Um, I think most husbands, uh, you know, really do want to support as, yeah. as well as they possibly can, um, but can lack that direction, as Abby was said, you know, as Abby was saying, like, if, if your husband is asking, like, hey, what do you want me to do? Start an Instagram? Uh, do you want me to go talk to people? Like, that's a good sign that, like, he is he understands help. the value of this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, you know, so there, there needs to be a lot of conversations. There needs to be, um, you know, a lot of planning together to figure out, like, what is it that's going to make us successful at this? Um, we call this working on the weenus. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to a book the other day, and uh, they were talking about the importance of a weenus, uh, and that's the, the togetherness. <laughs> and anyway, we laughed for a long time about that. Um, but anyway, working on the weenus. Uh, a schedule is a place to execute a plan, right? So as simple as that might sound, I don't want to describe, uh, uh, to define what a schedule is. Um, I'm sure we all know what that is. 
but like literally, I, I, I want to make this clear, like it's the place that this, the plan is executed, right? So if you have an amazing plan and you're like, okay, this is, this is what we're going to do to get to, you know, to the higher ranks and this is a rank we need to be successful as a family and you've got all this like idea, but you don't have a specific like Monday I'm doing this, mm-hmm. Tuesday I'm doing this, from this time to this time, Wednesday I'm doing this. If you don't have that, then the, the plan falls apart because there's no place to put it into. Um, and so, I, you, know, I, I, you know, it's very, that's a very simple definition, but like that is, it is so crucial that if you guys are gonna do this together is to figure out like when, when you know, your husband comes home, like what spaces of what days are you gonna create uh, to, to make sure this happens, to make this successful. And, um, you know, and so it's important to have a schedule. Yeah. Um, two, I, I put down here two guaranteed reasons um, wives will fail is if they have a plan but no schedule or a schedule but no plan. Um, and again, you can have the greatest plan, but if you don't have a specific space to execute mm-hmm. it, then it, it, it probably won't happen. And the, the opposite is true. You can have a great schedule, Okay, but I have a question. They can have a good plan, but what if they're a housewife and if their husband works very long hours? When are they gonna get to do stuff like that? If they have little babies and toddlers that are always at home, what are they supposed to do when the husband's not around? What about that schedule? I mean, I feel like they're focusing on the easiest situation and the most direct situation rather than actually going into things that are actually bothering women that are watching this for the sake of, you know, getting their husbands to support them. But again, these people are not you know they don't have any kind of education in marriage therapy or anything so this is just a lot of bs um you know i'm I'm, you know maybe a green personality you have all these spaces in the week where you're like okay i'm gonna carve out you know when you get home here and this moment on the weekend and these you know times but if there's no plan then you probably won't be successful without those two things and so we're talking about the schedule um the other side of that um, I put down here, uh, don't let your wife create a schedule on her own. Um, like th- you, this has to be done together. And so I focus I, on the weenus guys. <laughs> yeah, focus on the weenus. Um, it has to, you have to do this together because and maybe not every relationship is like this and maybe not every wife will have the same response, but if it's not planned out together, then I think a lot of times women will feel like they're stealing time Mm -hmm. uh, from their families, right? Did he just say women? You know, maybe up to this point, it's been, uh, you know, the husband is working 40 or more hours a week. And then she's like, hey, I want to do this thing. And if it's not something that's decided together and she's like, hey, listen, I'm going to try to take these times on these days to do something. um, If it's not agreed on or planned on together, then she's going to feel like I'm pulling away from our family time, right? And so if it's not, it, it, there, it, there needs that agreement uh, so that it doesn't feel that. Um, I know um, Abby has felt, and I think a lot of wives feel this, like massive amounts of guilt uh, while trying to build a business. I mean, you know, uh, you know, when I think what Abby's accomplished for our family in uh, bringing me home, you know, we went to Hawaii for a while, um, like just like an incredible, like massive life change but a lot of the time she did it, she felt really guilty trying to do any work. And so f- for me, I'm like, why do you feel guilty? Like that's, that's, that's horrible that you, you're trying to carry this weight and, and do these incredible things, but you feel guilty doing it. Um, and a lot of, I think what uh, lifts that guilt is when uh, there's an actual plan and it's, it's agreed, agreed on together. Yeah, yeah it's gotta be agreed And upon. I will say, you know, at the beginning of my business, like, and you may be in this place where you're, you know, you're at home with one or two or however many kids you have and your husband's at work, you don't necessarily need to like create a schedule for him while, while he's gone. Like if you're going to, like I did a lot of work while he was gone. What I needed from him when he came home and it wasn't all the time, but I had certain days where I was teaching classes. I was either going to a class or I was teaching a class online or I was meeting with people or I was, 
um, leading a training or I was. We use the word teaching classes loosely over here because she's talking about the Zoom calls, which we've seen a lot of Zoom calls by now, including her own Zoom training. It's very rich. It's very generous to call those teaching classes because they don't carry any value in my opinion. They're just ramblings and word salads that are not useful at all. Doing something and that I needed him to like actually take the kids out because I was homeschooling my kids and so I needed a space where like I didn't have any kids with me so that I could focus on this class that I was teaching or whatever I was doing and so I was like okay when you come home you know after dinner or whatever um can you take the kids whether it's the park or the bedroom or whatever like I just need I need some space here um and so you may you don't have to like if if your schedules are very different and he's gone at work and you're home with the kids, you don't necessarily have to like plan everything out in your day to day. Well, at lunch, I'm going to be doing this and at, you know, nap time, I'm going to be doing this. He doesn't even know that part. You just get your work done when you're able to. Um, but then if there's specific time where you're like, I need focus time without kids in the room, that's when you're scheduling it with your husband and saying, I'm going to be gone. I have to go to a class here. I'm going to be teaching this here. I'm going to be going to this thing or I'm going to be hosting a call, or I'm gonna be on a training that I need to learn from or whatever, I need these times child-free, right? So. Yeah, and another uh, reason um, I put down here not to um, have your wife create a schedule on her own, um, and again, this may not be this, you know, uh, what every couple experiences, but I, I believe, and we've experienced this a bunch, is you'll create a schedule and then you'll find that it drifts back to the old norm, you know, um, where, you know, let's say we carve out a few days a week where you're like, okay, this is what's, you know, this is what we want to happen. And, and then if it's not agreed upon, then it kind of just like floats back into this, like, where, where is the work going to get done? Like, yeah. how are you going to pursue uh, making this stuff happen? Yeah. So I, I found that that happens. Um, ultimately, uh, it kills, it creates a lot of start and stop. You know, um, you know, let's just say, you know, you, you don't end up having like a really a workable schedule. And so you're just kind of like jumping in, you know, in these little tiny increments. And I know that works for some people, but it, it ends up, I, I believe, creating a start stop and kills all momentum, yeah. you know, so that those are. And really like if you're constantly killing momentum because you're not staying consistent with a schedule or with what you're doing or whatever, a, a lot of this business can just be like you know, wash, rinse, repeat over. It's just whatever you're doing this month, plan it for the next month, plan it for the next month. And it doesn't have to be consuming all of your time. You can really get really good work done. If it's scheduled in, you can get really good income producing work done in a short amount of time. It does not have to consume your days. There's a saying like you can work this as a part-time job, but not part of the time. Um, and so if you're constantly stopping, going, stopping, going, I was even talking to, you know, one of my leaders, Danielle Berkeley, she's a Royal Crown Diamond. And I was talking to her about this whole like start, stop thing. And she's like, the best way to do this business is just to not stop. Like there's so many people that stop and then they start again and then they stop and then they start again. And it actually is harder to do a business like that. And there's more burnout and there's more frustration than if you just stayed consistent. Even if you just give a little bit at a time, as long as it's consistently like a part-time job, consistently doing it, you're going to have like so much more success in your business than if you're like, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Uh, it's confusing for people watching and it's confusing for yourself. It's confusing for your husband. I mean, can you imagine if your husband went to, had a job and you're like never knowing when he's going to go and you don't even know, he's like, I don't know what I'm doing today. You'd be like, oh babe, <laughs> let's figure this out because we need to put food on the table, right? If he's like, I think I'm going to go to work today. I don't know if I'm going to work today. I don't know if I'm going to shower today. He'd be like, babe, <laughs> get it together. Is it a job? Is it a real job? Maybe I need to go to work, right? And that's what our husbands can look at us and be like, you're not showering again. You're not doing anything. You say you're going to go to work and you... Okay, since she made it sound very easy as if you can do a little bit of work bit by bit and you can produce income for your family very quickly, very easily. I thought I was just going to pull up the income disclosure statement, which is also going to be linked in the description box down below if you want to take a further look. Over 91% of the company sits at the bottom to rank. Shocker, right? And annual median income for the very lowest rank is zero. 
zero. So most of distributors in Young Living earn zero dollars per year. So talk about income producing, very easy, very quick business model that anyone can do in the pockets of your time, right? It's just pure BS. We're gonna like be millionaires, but like, what are you do? do you know what you're doing? I don't know if you know what you're doing, right? So we wanna give them confidence that like, no, I, I am a strong businesswoman. I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna shower today. <laughs> watch me boo and get get to it right but if you're just constantly like start stop and that's very confusing and so he's not gonna have a lot of trust in what you're doing because you don't even know what you're doing right just like if the tables are turned if he had a job that I was like I don't even know if he's going to work today and when he goes to work I don't even think he knows what he's doing like I'm afraid he's gonna get fired like there's no way he's making money right I want to know that like my man is getting up. Okay, big difference though. First of all, you're not a businesswoman. By joining an MLM, you're just an independent contractor for the MLM company. So you're not a businesswoman. Um, most of these women don't earn any kind of money as well or any kind of profit, which is confirmed by the FTC as well. But also, if your husband has a job, a regular job even if he's not doing anything yes maybe he can get fired if he's not very useful at the job however at least that kind of job has a steady paycheck and as long as he has the job even if he's putting in minimal effort he's still going to get regular paychecks so big difference in security when you do MLM and when you actually have a regular job that pays you regularly when he's getting dressed and he's getting work done and bring home money and he's a good worker and all that stuff just like tables are turned right he wants to know like hey if we're gonna bet our family on this like please do good work right yeah and we really have like you know that's that's where we're at um but okay this rubs me off very wrong because she said please do good work implying that you're not earning money most of the people aren't earning money because they're not doing good work but in mlms you're doomed to fail because the business model is set up for you to fail so it doesn't matter if you're doing good or bad work it doesn't matter how much effort or hard work you put in you're still doomed to fail unless you have a big following on social media that you can recruit or if you join an mlm early enough at its early stages those are the only two ways where you can actually be successful in an mlm everything else the business is working against you it is set up for you to fail so it has nothing to do with how much work or effort you put in but still we still struggle with yeah. the the communicating and figure out like when are we gonna do what things you know uh, and like Abby was saying like you <clears throat> you kill that momentum and then that ends up killing the plan and that yeah. kills the dream and then discouragement comes yeah. in and yeah it's just not a good cycle yeah uh, I was gonna say too um, I think you were saying this like a schedule creates confidence for me um, like I, I want to know that we're gonna make it you know that, that we're going someplace um, when there's no schedule and the, it's funny because like I think there's been seasons where Abby doesn't want to like impose a schedule on her family and be like this is when I'm doing this, this is when I'm doing this and I feel this like a lot of like insecurity surrounding all of the stuff where I'm like okay like I'm yeah. geared up, I'm ready to go. I'm, you know, give me, give me the kids. You go, you know, run upstairs, you know, you know, work it, you know, get some stuff done. And, uh, and, and I'll feel that like, like massive insecurity of like, I don't know what we're doing. And at the same time, she's like, well, I don't want to impose that plan on the, on the family. Anyway, we, we, through many conversations, you know, we've had to figure out like, okay, I need a plan yeah. and your business needs a plan. And so like, let's have these conversations. And like, I, like, as soon as we have a plan, I know exactly where I can do other things, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, it brings peace. It brings peace to my heart. It brings peace to his heart, to our kids. If they know, okay, this is when mom's working. Um, this, he knows, it, it just brings peace. And I'll even feel like if I know that these are the times that I'm gonna get really good work done that's focused, um, then when I'm not working, there's like peace too, that I can fully engage with my kids, with my husband, with whatever we're doing, because I know that I got good work done versus like, I'm kind of working here. I'm kind of not like, I don't know when I'm ever doing anything. And then you kind of always feel like you always have to be on your phone. I hear people all the time. I couldn't do this business because I can't be on my phone. I don't want my kids always seeing me on the phone. Well then create a schedule. So you don't have to do that. Like I don't have to always have my phone yeah. on. Um, there are times that I'm like, this is sacred family time. This is time that is just for my kids, just for my husband, whatever, um, where I'm not working. And then when I am working, I can be focused there because I'm like, okay, I'm going to give really good time to my family later. We're going to have movie time or baking or whatever. And, but this is when I'm working and I have to treat it like a real job. And so there's, 
it brings peace to like everyone in the home. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, do you mind? Yeah, I have to treat it like a real job but it's not actually a real job. <laughs> it's not something that's gonna give you a regular paycheck, like an actual regular job. Uh, sharing a little bit of our schedule. Yeah, I feel <clears> like <throat> it's, sharing this, I'm like, I don't know if this is helpful. Cause our, our season of life is very different than everybody's, you know, I mean, every, all of us are coming at different stages. Some of you guys have brand new babies. Some of you guys have older kids. Some of you guys don't have kids. Some of you guys, um, whatever you're all at different seasons. Some of you work, some of you don't work. Some of your husbands, you know, work in the home. Some of them work out of the home. So th it's really important to like base it off of what works for your family because it's been different in all of the seasons of our family. Um, when I've had other, you know, my kids that were older, I could get a lot more done without his help when he was working. Um, versus when I had a baby, I needed a lot more help if I was going to get focus work done with a baby in the house, right? And so anyways, it's knowing your season. Right now, I have very focused days. So like my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are like my hardcore, like I'm getting a bunch done. And so I have from morning until later in the afternoon that I am working. Um, I get up, I mean, this, the last three weeks has been wonky town because of sickness wiping our family out. <laughs> Literally, we're just laying on the floor. But, um, when we're not knocked out with that sickness that we shall not speak of, um, I, I get up, I get dressed, I'm ready. And then I get, I work out, I have my Bible time and then I get to work and I have focused time. I have things written out. Like this is what I know to do. Um, so that I'm not getting upstairs and like, oh, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Right. I want to have it written out. I want to know what is happening when I'm going into it. I have a calendar. I have things written down. And so I know that I can get really good work done. So my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is very focused on, and I'm in front of the camera. I'm like showing my face, all those things. Thursday is his day. He's writing a book right now. And so he takes the whole day and just is out of here. And um, he does our family shopping and all the wonderful things for family. And I honestly don't know why they, they went into this because I, I don't feel like knowing their own schedule is helpful to anyone, not to me, not to the people who are in the MLM, but whatever. So um, that's a day that I do a ton of stuff behind the scenes. Um, so I may not be getting ready. I'm usually like no makeup. I'm in soft clothes all day long, <laughs> but that's when I'm very focused on. I'm just a mom at home with my babies and and I actually really love that day. I love how, I love planning a day that is much more chill. I'm still working, I'm still messaging people, I still boxer people, I'm still, I'll put a post up or whatever. So is that your sacred time when you're a mom to your kids and you're spending time with your kids but you're still cold messaging people on Instagram? How is that time freedom and how is that sacred time with your kids if you're still working and cold messaging people on Instagram. You're just staring at your phone and you're being distracted by your phone. But I'm not really going to be showing my face. Um, I'm not going to be scheduling any calls. If people want to schedule a call on a Thursday, I tell them I can't because I can't. I, I've scheduled that time out. This is when I'm more focused on my children um, with doing behind the scenes work. And then Friday is like a catch up day where I'm closing out all of my um, calls for the most part. Um, I'm trying to catch up on emails and all the messages and all the social platforms. And um, if I have any other calls or whatever, just knocking everything out because Saturday is a day of rest that I don't do work. I don't want my phone on. I don't want any of that stuff. And I plan that. It is scheduled time to not work that I can focus on the Lord. I can focus on my family. I can just literally let myself breathe because everything I do for my business is attached to my phone. And so I need for my own like health and wellness, I need a, I need a day that I'm not working. Um, and so, and then Sundays is kind of like, whatever, if I am able to do stuff, awesome. I'm, I don't put a lot of pressure on myself for Sundays. Um, and that's kind of like what our schedule is at the, at the moment. And I can get really, really good work done during that time. Um, another thing on Thursdays behind the scenes is like if I have to put packages together or whatever, anything that I can do that I don't have to show my face, that's the day I do it. Um, so I think, you know, but at different seasons of different times, like when I very first started this business, 
um, you don't have to give as much time when you're just starting out. Say you're, you know, still a distributor or you're hitting star or you're going for senior star or whatever, and you're at those newer ranks, you don't have as much of a team. You're not going to be having groups that you're doing. You're not going to be, you know, doing all these trainings and all that stuff. All that stuff's already done for you. So your focus can be very like smaller hours. You can do like one hour a day and get really, really good work done um, and feel good about that. And it doesn't have to be consuming. And, you know, I would schedule it when I could. I was homeschooling. I was home. He was working full time. I was at home full time with the kids. Um, and so I was homeschooling my kids. I was exercising. And then I would try to get as much as I could done in between my, my kids. I would work during lunch breaks or during nap times or whatever. And then when he would come home from work, if I had something scheduled, I would let him know ahead of time, hey, I have a class, or I would just have continual things. So I would be like, okay, every Monday I have a class or whatever, so that he knows, okay, this is what the schedule is. I need to be home at this time so that I can watch the kids because she has a, a class, right? I have this thing happening. I have this training happening. I have this team meeting that I need to be present because I need to be taught from my leaders, right? And so I prioritize that with him. Um, around his schedule if and and then there was other times when we were first starting we were serving in churches and so we would have worship night practices so I couldn't schedule it that night right and so it's just knowing it's working together and saying okay these are the free nights we have this is when I need your help um, and and adjusting it and then if it doesn't work it's not set in stone you just adjust it and are like okay that was actually horrible <laughs> I hated that schedule so let's scrap that let's start fresh what let's try another Thing and see if that works and just give yourself a lot of grace and work together on you know having that communication of like what's going to work what are you willing to do for me um and then have a lot of fun with it you know like schedule time with your spouse with your children schedule time where you're not working and then schedule time where you're getting really really good work done so that you can find joy and not be burnt out because this business is incredible like life-changing um, so don't allow yourself to get burnt out. Don't allow yourself like schedule in the right. How is it life changing though? If over 91% of people earn a zero to $200 medium annually, how is that life changing for who For the top 1%, right? Less than 1%, which is where you belong luckily, but most of your downline, they're not earning any profit. So how is it life changing? It's life changing for you. It's not life changing for them. And I find it hard to believe that she is not noticing this pattern of her downline not getting any success. Right time for the right things. Um, and it can be life changing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that people feel at times that if they schedule time, that means they're giving time away, but it, it actually creates a lot of confidence and yeah. excitement. You know, um, your husband will know exactly um, how and where to help you. Um, you know, and at times, you know, um, I think the husband's role will be to, hey, like it's Monday, you know, you know, are you ready for this? You know, and to really encourage, you know, uh, I think of the, the changing seasons, you know, um, having a baby. I know a lot of people on the team have had babies. Uh, it's so exciting, but there has to be some grace and um and readjustments and coming back to like okay you know we just made it through a really tough time or sickness or a new baby and now how do we transition back to a successful schedule to pursue the things that are important you know um i know that uh you know it, it just it creates confidence um you know creates momentum and all that stuff you know it's it's super important um this is, uh, you know, super, super simple, uh, you know, uh, but this is the, um, the what to do uh, part. And, and we, you know, I, I really feel like the only way to be successful with this is to grab a piece of paper and a pencil. And, and you know, Abby and I have done this a lot, um, like many times, you know, whether it's a, a piece of paper or our cell phones um, or a big, uh, a, you white know, board. a whiteboard, yeah, and, and markers. And, you know, and we usually start off with like with our goals and then we'll, we'll try to, to break that down into uh, uh, weekly segments. You know, um, you know, sometimes, you know, it might be something, you know, she might be like, you know, I really want to connect more with people or I really want to create one on one calls or I really want to, you know, fill in the blank. And then once she figures out, like, what is the approach that she wants to take, then it's like, how do you place that into the week? And, and make that happen. And of course, like I was saying, you know, then 
you know, that's exciting for me to be able to, you know, help to support that as best I can. Um, so grab a, uh, grab a, uh, a paper and pencil, uh, grab your partner, uh, write down the dreams and goals, like write down the bigger picture, like have that figured out for sure. And then decide how much time you want to invest. You know, like Abby was saying, um, different seasons require different amount of times. And so you might be in a season where you need a few hours a week, you know, um, but you also may be in a place, you know, where you're like, no, we're going to expedite the process and I'm going to give some, like a massive amount of time to get to where we want to be. Uh -huh. And if that's the case, then you have to work that into like, we need these blocks of time during the week to create that. Yeah. Um, decide the tasks that are going to work for you. I, I put in here uh, uh, to consider, you know, talking to an upline, you know, talking to Abby, talking to, um, you know, people that are doing what you want to do, you know, ask that question, you know, like, you know, what does your schedule look like? And uh, use that to help figure out like, what should the schedule be? You know, again, you know, our schedule may look different than somebody else's, but this is what's working for us. Like this is, we, we have to have a weekly schedule. Um, otherwise we, we start to, you know, uh, just feel like we're not going anywhere. And, and that's a, that's a scary place to be. Um, I think Abby mentioned this too, but, you know, create a mock schedule, um, you know, you know, dream on paper, uh, do your best to stick to that schedule. And if it doesn't work, then rework that schedule into something that's going to work for you guys and then try to stick to it, you know, fight against the, the you know what I wonder, I wonder, do they actually think that this is going to help people? Do they actually believe that them talking all of this is actually going to help people get successful in an MLM. The old norm slipping back in, yeah. you know, uh, fight against that place where there's like no communication. Um, one of the things that uh, Abby and I do almost every day, um, I don't think it's intentional, but you know, she'll you know, we'll finish breakfast together, um, have coffee, uh, getting the kids up, feeding the kids. And then almost every day I'll ask her the question, like, what are you doing today? Mm -hmm. And if she tells me like, you know, at this time I've got a call, uh, I'm doing these things at this time. I'm trying to connect on video or whatever. Like that's really exciting to me because then I know what's happening. I know if I have no plan. He's like, oh, <laughs> Lord Jesus, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, my wife. it's terrifying. <laughs> no, it is. It is. You know, but when there is a plan, um, you know, then I know exactly how I'm supporting and yeah. the things that I'm doing that day. And, uh, you know, if, and if it's I wanna... clear, like, you know, if he has things that he wants to, cause I'll ask him like, what, what are your plans? Like, what are you wanting to do? He loves to, he's very active. He loves going to the lake. He loves working out. He loves, he's writing a book right now. And so it's also like getting stuff, you know, what is he wanting to get accomplished today? What is he wanting to do? And then adjusting it to be like, okay, well, I'm working from this time to this time. I have calls at this time. I could finish early on this day because I, this is what I'm actually going to do. And so I don't need the full time that I allotted for this. Um, so let's go to the lake together or whatever, yeah. you know? And so it's just, it's having that communication. So we have a schedule. I have it up on my fridge. Um, so even my kids can see, okay, these are the days that mom is, is going to be like working and this is what it looks like. Um, you know, but again, like this is our own business. And so we can decide, you know what, today is a day that we're just going to take off as a family. And, and we have the freedom to do that. We don't have to ask permission. We're just talking to each other about it. Um, or if there's certain things that he's wanting to get done or whatever. And so, um, you know, you can be really flexible, but it is important to have a, a schedule out. And then each day we always talk to each other, like, this is what I have going on, or I need you to, or I'll even ask my kids like, Hey, can you help with the baby for this time? Because mom and dad are going to be on a call tonight. And so my oldest is watching the kids downstairs and, you know, and so it's just having that communication. But. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's not just, you know, myself, but like you were saying, like, um, our kids need that. Like they yeah. need to know, um, our kids have, you know, they're very creative. There's things they're working on and doing. Uh, and I've, I've watched them get stressed, you know, because we'll be like, Hey, we're going to go do this thing. And for some reason, our kids, you they know, love a plan. They love a plan. Love a plan. <laughs> yeah, they love a plan. And, uh, you know, so that really helps them to know what's going on. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, my son, the first thing he talks to me about, you know, is he wants to go to the lake today. Every day. And, and so, it, but it helps him. If I can tell him, like, hey, at three o'clock, yeah. that's when we're going to go. We're going to go for an hour and then we'll come back and there's other things we got to do. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's super helpful, you know. So anyway, make a plan. 
don't let your wife do it on your own. Like, make sure you, you guys do this together. Um, it, it helps to get rid of all of the mom guilt, yeah. um, all of the uh, start and stop, you know, all the stuff that kills momentum, and, uh, and stick to it as best as possible. You know, have a lot of grace, but communicate a lot on these things. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for giving us grace, for being patient, for being here. We're so grateful for you guys. If you have any questions, let us know. We'll chat with you guys later, Gators. Well, I mean, that was just very useless in my opinion. I, I haven't heard a single thing that they said that would be useful to anyone who is watching this. Unless they're in the exact same situation. Even just sharing their schedule just seems so unnecessary to me. It's like as if they're trying to buy time so that they're holding these classes, training classes for a certain amount of time. Like I said, I don't think anyone has gotten any value off of what they shared here. I think the part three is answering some people's questions i'm gonna have to double check if it's other people's questions then we're gonna watch it if it's not we're probably not gonna watch part three because this is very boring this was a word salad this was very useless as well i mean let me know down below if you want to see part three anyway let me know down below what you thought about this thank you so much for watching especially if you made it this far i appreciate you you're a true trooper don't forget to click the like and subscribe button if you'd like to support my channel and myself and big shout out to all my channel members i appreciate you guys and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.